Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a Cube World Starter Guide. This is everything you need to know about starting out in Cube World. Some class information, quests, village info, crafting, resources, how to get pets and much much more. So make sure you like the video if you want more Cube World content. Go and check out some other guides and yeah let's get into one of the toughest games surprisingly you'll probably play but it's very rewarding once you start working out the systems. It's very different. Cube World after six years is finally here full release. Go and check it out on Steam right now. There are four character classes you can choose with each having an extra subclass. Warrior Rogue, Ranger and Mage. Warrior lets you choose between a Berserker or a Guardian. Rogue is going to give you the option to be an Assassin or a Ninja. Ranger you can be a Sniper or a Scout. And in Mage terms you're going to be Water or a Fire Mage. Just for preference, Rogue, Mage and the Ranger class all really offer the only ways to play from a distance. Even with the Warrior Specialist class, it's pretty much a close up affair. Make sure you check out my guide on which one of these characters is best. Okay, some quick very basics. If you press F1, it'll bring up exactly what the mouse and buttons do. If you press Escape, it'll also give you the menu options. Join multiplayer, graphics and options, world map, backpack and crafting. I'm not going to list every single key binding because you can customise it and change it for yourself or use a controller. Check the options for more details about what buttons do what. When you first spawn in, you should be pretty close to a village. Head here, this is where you're going to pick up all your quests to get progress through the game and pick up some flasks to make potions. I head to the potion shop, zooming in on the map to take a closer look at where it is. Along the way, talk to every single NPC you can find. These are going to open up the quests and the key items you're going to need to progress. Here's one of the key items that you get. I've explained this all in a much more detailed video about quests and key items. But briefly, each key item is going to be stuck or set with this one region. So every time I travel to a new biome, I'm going to have to find the key items all over again. This obviously means the game doesn't become too easy. The key items consist of all sorts of items, including this boat. Other items are specifically going to help you in some of the dungeons that you're going to be exploring. You can also find things like gliders and climbing gear. This is really the meat and the potatoes of the Cube World game. Finding the key items, using the keys to get what's there, that's how you progress. Eventually when you've got enough key items and you've discovered enough lore books, you'll get the location of dungeons. You can come across these dungeons on your own as well, but you will require some of these key items to get through them. The dungeons are really hard, but it's part of the end game. Once you complete these dungeons, it will give you access to better loot and you will also get artifacts. Artifacts increase your level and that's how you really progress and conquer one of the lands. This is pretty end game stuff though the dungeons, so I'm going to be taking you through that in a separate video in much much more detail, but I have covered even more with the quests in a separate video that's already up on my channel. But let's go through some of the basics of the key items or the quest items. You'll notice I can't get through this portcullis, I need a special key item to do so, which is a bell which puts me through to the spirit world. Here's the bell in action in a portcullis on another character. You can see it starts making the world around me go very dark and I'm in the spirit realm so I can go through and get whatever loot's there. Some key items you'll just find sitting there out in the open. Others you have to do specific things like kill all the mobs around it. It just depends on what the key item is. So whenever you talk to a villager and it gives you a quest, look to see if it is a key item. The main ones being the bell, the harp and the sky whistle. The boat, the glider, the climbing gear, they're all things that just help you in general. You can also find reins, which you're going to need to get a pet. Pets come in all shapes and sizes, so you can absolutely love a shark if you really want to. you just got to feed him the right food. Normally each store inside a village has at least one pet food that you can buy, and you can also get pet food from killing mobs in and around the world. Pets are pretty fussy, they'll only be tamed if you get the right food. I've got an exhaustive list coming showing you everything that the pets eat. What you need to do is hold the pet food out in front of you and if the pet likes it, it will immediately start eating and a heart will fill above its head. In this clip here, I don't know if it was a glitch or maybe I accidentally pressed attack, but the other pets started to attack me and they obviously killed me. So let me know if that happens to you, but normally I would say try and get a pet on its own. Pets never die, although they will actually be killed, they'll always respawn and come back to you. You have a whistle that you can press, which will basically call them for you, and you can ride most of your pets. Just for reference, this one, you've got to press T to ride it. 
Not all pets are super fast, some have more damage output, and even though some are more rare, you generally get the level that you are. You can have more than one pet and it will store them inside a small chest in your inventory so you can swap in and out whenever you get any brand new pets. Let's talk about one of the most confusing things in Cube World that a lot of people have been struggling with, using my boat. So you can see right now I haven't got my boat swimming around in the water, but I just had it, so where did it go? Not only that, but my HP has also dipped a little bit. When I swim back to the borders of the biome that I found the boat and all the rest of my key items, my HP goes back to its normal level. Again, this is part of the progression system of Cube World. You need to keep going through each single biome, exploring, getting all the key items, and basically leveling up in one zone before traveling to the next. You can, of course, go to the next zone if you really want, but if it turns out it's a pretty serious hard zone, you may find it even harder to progress in the game. It's the same for most gear that you find as well. Swords, weapons, anything that you buy or stuff that you find, it will be region locked to that one zone. There are some exceptions to this. You can take potions and other items with you like resources. You just can't take any key items. And there is gear plus items that you can take in some areas around. So whenever you get a new item, check to see if it's got a little plus sign after the description and make sure you keep that when you want to go adventuring elsewhere. Anything else that you don't really find a use for, go ahead and sell. You will get a lot of class items for other classes. So far, there is no way to save them and use them on your other characters, so you can only give them to friends that may join you. All key items, including boats, gliders, as well as the special stuff like the bell and the harp, can be copied and given to your friends. Basically, when you drop it using the middle wheel on the mouse button, it will give your friend a copy so you can both use a boat or you can both go hang gliding. Another big component you'll get from quests is books. This is how you can craft and make your own rare armor and weapons, legendary armor and weapons, and magical stuff too. You can also find these items out in the world, but one of the quests involved me fighting this giant massive creature and I had to clear out some of the rest of the area. Once I defeated him, it gave me access to the magic book, which is gonna allow me to make, I do believe, amulets and all sorts of other magical stuff. Obviously you can still craft normal weapons and you can still craft rings and stuff, but the magic book is gonna give you much more abilities to craft much better higher end gear. So if you're frustrated that you've only been finding certain pieces of armor and weapons and not something that you really want and you really want to go out and grind the resources to craft your own stuff, make sure you do the quest that you do get the magic book or the legendary or the rare book. It's not cheap to craft these items. You're gonna need a whole bunch of iron blocks, at least 50 cubes. Some of them require a lot of diamonds, lots and lots of the other jewels as well. So make sure you're going around and gathering as much of that as possible. And I shouldn't really need to say, but you have to craft the bulk of these back at the village at the certain workstations. So talk to every single villager. You can go and explore and find these key items without it, but it's very much easier. Now we've got that out of the way, let's carry on exploring the village with more star tips. Once inside the potion shop, go ahead and buy at least three to five glass flasks. And what you'll notice, you'll also have a choice between usually two different types of melee weapon. Play around with one for sure and pretty much sell one of them so that you can actually buy some flasks. There are lots of different healing items in the game, including just fresh fruits and food types that you can get that drop on the floor. Apples are your friend. These are gonna replenish your health whenever you're low. The only downside being it stops you in your tracks when you're healing. Whereas when you drink a potion, you can carry on running. These shimmer mushrooms are really important for helping make different types of potions that are going to give you strength. There's lots of different resources that I'm not going to list right now, but just go and gather anything that looks like a flower or food, and you'll either be able to use it as an ingredient in potions, or eat it straight away to heal yourself. That's why flasks are so important, that's why you should gather some as soon as you get to a village. You'll also need to find some water, so you can actually craft the flasks into water flasks while being in some water. Some items can only be crafted at campfires. You can use campfires from gnomes that you come across and other factions. Typically, lots of the food items that you find, craft these up and they'll give you a small amount of HP normally. Towns are generally safe, but occasionally you will encounter mobs. As soon as you die, you will respawn back at the shrine. Whenever you unlock some more shrines, it will also appear as a blue dot and you can fast travel to any one of them. Now you don't actually activate these just by finding them, you need to go up to them and play your magic flute. The light will go on and you've acted that as a now spawn point. 
This little shop here with the magnifying glass is your leftovers. And no, I'm not talking about your cake and custard after school dinner. When you kill certain enemies, you'll sometimes drop what is called leftovers. These can be different rarities. And by identifying them, basically you're getting free loot. Next port call is this guy. This is how you choose your specialization. I'm the rogue class at the moment. So if I want to become a ninja, I just click that. And now I'm a ninja. You can go back and forth and change your specialization anytime you want for free. Next up, don't worry about the climbing ninjas, the silly parkour boys. You'll find an inn. Now these are pretty useless unless you want to get ripped off and spend a night in a bed. Nighttime is judged by being six in the evening to six in the morning, but it costs 10 gold. Do not spend or waste your money. You're far better off using the time to keep going around and talking to all the villagers. Nighttime lasts for absolute ages in this game. It's exactly the same amount of time as daylight. So get used to using your little lamp if you press the right on the D-pad or F on the keyboard. Next up, you've got stations where you can craft and make your own armor and weapons. This is the furnace. Something brand new revolutionary in all games. This is where you can put resources to make iron cubes, gold cubes, and silver. More on that later on how to get them. But just let it be known right now, this tiny little humble sword you see before you, you can customize that and increase its power. Once you've got cubes to do customizing, bring it over to the customization bench and go ahead and start placing it on your items wherever you want. You do have a limit of 16, and if it's an iron weapon, then it will only accept iron cubes. They'll incrementally increase how much damage output you're doing or defending if it's a shield item. You can add extra stats to all different types of swords and weapons and shields. Iron is also the armor type that you need to craft your own armor when for a warrior class. So the anvil is where you can craft actual weapons. There's various different effects that your weapons and armor will help with. Extra HP, haste or critical damage and obviously just the straight up damage which is highlighted in light blue. Next up we've got the spinning wheel and the loom. This is basically going to help out certain classes that utilize this type of armor. Warriors are going to use the blacksmiths the most or you'll find that rogues and mages are going to be using the loom. The spinning wheel is where you take your raw cotton. Cotton is used for rogue armor. If you're crafting mage armor, you're going to need to find spider webs and so you can get silk. You can create lots of different types of armor here at the loom. Bear in mind it's going to use the cotton that you've already got. So you get the idea. Whatever class you've got, you're going to have a specific station to bring your raw resource. That will create cubes that you can then customize or you can simply just craft brand new weapons and armor. It's pretty much the same thing here. We've got the wooden saw, and we're gonna be making wooden cubes, which we can then use to upgrade our wooden staffs. Never miss up the opportunity to pick up some of these deposits, whether it's iron, gold, or silver. But also don't forget to pick up what it drops. You need to do it manually, so don't leave your cubes lying around. Generally, you will find a fair amount of resources like these in caves and on mountainsides. And as you can tell, we've got some good resources in the water here, but we've also got a bit of an enemy. If you thought you'd be safe because it's a water creature, think again. They will come onto land and try and take you down. Generally, if you need a resource, just lead it away so that it can get whatever it was guarding. Diamonds are really rare, so make sure you pick these up always. The waterways can be a really good spot to actually find loot. Different biomes are gonna have a different abundance though. It's not always the same in every single one. Just don't leave it too long. If you happen to encounter this tiny little problem, well, you're basically buggered. You're gonna to have to go and find another town where you can actually buy armor. Humans do get possessed. Whether it's intentional or not, it does cause significant problems. If it happens to you, you are gonna to have to find another town to buy some armor. You'll find armor sellers, weapon sellers, and potion sellers. Hopefully they won't be as angry as this dude. This little eagle here, signified by the blue wing is actually a fast travel option to join your friends in multiplayer or to journey back and forth between different biomes once you've unlocked them. But it gets pretty expensive with 100 gold being the cost. So you fully explore the village, you spoke to everyone in it and you've got a general idea what the crafting benches do. What do you do to actually start exploring? Well, take a good look at your map. By now, if you've spoken to enough people, there should have been lots of waypoints opening up giving you lots of locations for the key items that we spoke about, as well as other bits of loot and necessary gear. You can sometimes find up to two or three villages in each biome. So if you find you've exhausted all of the missions in one, but you're still missing some key items, keep exploring and use the actual big map 
to see if you can find another village off in the distance. Don't panic if you don't actually find another village or town though, you will still come across plenty of NPCs that will give you quests if you really have gone and spoken to everyone inside the first village you come across. Again, as a rule of thumb though, these locations here that look pretty interesting are going to have some sort of quest or key item to go and get. So even if things aren't popping up, follow the landmarks that are actually on the map and anything that looks interesting. I found this one and I didn't really even have to look that hard. If you haven't found an NPC that gave you the mission, it will just show up as a speech bubble for now. There are no save points in Cube World other than shrines, so if you don't want to keep spawning halfway across the map, make sure you look out for them. Pretty much every named location on the map, i.e. where key items are, you normally find at least one point to save nearby. It's not always directly close to it though, so be on the lookout. These guys are money grabbers. They'll literally sell you some jewels, which can be used to make high powered gear, but you're not going to need that for a while, and they're pretty expensive. Only use them if you've got absolutely abundance of gold. You cannot punch trees in Cube World, but you can punch leaves. It does absolutely nothing, including also punching snow. It's just something pretty to look at while you're bored. No, stop eating the apples. You can usually only hold up to five food items of the same type, so don't be afraid to pop an apple whenever you're starting to lose a little bit of health. When you're exploring, you're going to keep coming across NPCs. If they've got a blue health bar, that means they're pretty friendly. Red health bars mean they're going to be dangerous, and green means they're a pet, so make sure you carry on talking to them to keep getting their missions. NPCs in blue would also help you out against the local wildlife. It's a great way to hoover up gold or coins, leading the enemies onto a friendly faction. Remember, Q World is procedurally generated, so you're going to find different varieties of weapons with different strengths, as well as different types of enemies, and you pretty much should know the basics of that if you've ever played Fortnite, Borderlands, etc. You can change in the options whether or not you want to rate it by stars or by colour rarity. Just in case you've never played that type of game though, white normally means pretty common, Green means uncommon, blue is going to be rare, and then you've got things like legendary, which is usually gold or yellow. So closing out this star guide, and remember I've got much more detailed guides about the quest items, giving you more information about pets, and also how to craft and make all sorts of potions and weapons. Few things you need to know. You can fast travel at any point by clicking on your map and clicking on one of them blue dots that I mentioned earlier, which will basically take you to a shrine. When you're in multiplayer, your friends will scale with you and they won't have to worry too much about getting other weapons or being really underpowered as they'll have to get weapons from that area just like you. If you know you're going to be playing multiplayer quite a bit, save all the other class items that you'll find while exploring and give them to your friends as you come across. Early game, you want to be finding as many pets or as many white creatures as possible to kill them so you can get gold. It's really hard to take on lots of other enemies at the very beginning. You are going to die a lot, like Dark Souls level dying. Each class has their own set of skills and you can combination a lot of the buttons and a lot of the attacks to work better with each other. I'm going to be doing that in a much more detailed guide, I don't really want to rush through it right now. But get used to your character, press all the buttons, make sure you press F1 to see what they all do and do lots of combos. You'll find that combos are pretty much the best way to defeat enemies, repeatedly hitting them and then using your specials. Soon as you can get enough resources or gold, go ahead and buy and upgrade your armor and weapons and you'll be able to take on much harder enemies. A good tip is if you want to get some resources underwater, eat something that's going to replenish your health over time like a potion and start diving down the minute you start eating it. Just be on the lookout for them blowfish. There's a little bit of a glitch at the moment that if you hold the swim button, you can actually swim underwater indefinitely without worrying about oxygen. Some of your key items work instantly when it's called for, like being in the water, it'll give you the option to use the boat. As you can see, the boat is much, much quicker than swimming around. Yeah, I found another shrine. There are dangers everywhere, so don't just assume the water's safe because you've not seen one of the big blowfish, including mermen. When you find one of these locations, with one of these little signs, you generally have to clear out the area of mobs. This is going to be very hard depending on what level they are. A lot of the key items require you to do this type of mission and kill all the mobs around you. So level up, make sure you see on the map what kind of star or rarity it is so you know whether or not you can take it on. 
I'm going to be doing a more advanced guide very soon, giving you more information about all the different types of quests that you can expect to face and complete dungeon runs. If you still want more help with region locking and how it all works, check out my other video I've done already. Q World can be really frustrating at the start, but stick with it and it starts getting a lot easier, particularly if you take on board some of my tips. Some of them are pretty basic, hopefully I've taught you something you don't know, and make sure you're locked onto my channel for more. I am JPG, giving you the best in survival, RPG and indie games. Make sure you're subscribed, you've got notification bell ticked on, and I'll see you rat bags later on.